We give you thanks for dogs, certainly one of the greatest gifts humanity could ever hope for. We ask that you would keep every dog running the quest, healthy, happy, and safe. We give you thanks for the people, the mushers who spend years preparing and endeavoring this incredible journey. Those who give five minutes or five weeks of their time to see that this race is organized, that every team is cared for. Keep them warm, keep them safe. Show the world the joy of the Yukon Quest through these people. And God, we give you thanks for the land, Alaska and Yukon, for all the beauty, the challenge, and the livelihood that we rely on, we draw inspiration from, and we are called by you to take care of and enjoy. May we never take for granted all the gifts we have in this life. The dogs, the people, and the land. The food drop is the first physical part of how the race starts to happen. So we start seeing volunteers that we haven't seen for a year. The family starts coming back together. And this is the beginning. So today it's the food drop. Throughout the week, we will switch um, trucks. We'll get all the supplies. We'll add it up to all the straw bales and all the extra the methanol and all the other things that need to happen, those will all get shipped out and delivered to the checkpoints in both Alaska and the Yukon. All that has to be done by Saturday because next Saturday, this time, this exact same place is the vet check where all the mushers will come in with all their dogs. And that's when your adrenaline really starts pumping because the dogs are all barking and it's so exciting. Every year, it's a whole new adventure and there's just no way with over a thousand volunteers to make this work. All the contractors, all the mushers, and all the dogs, it's never the same. Not one time is it ever the same. It's so amazing. And it's just, it's a privilege and it's an honor to be a part of something this amazing. So for these dogs today, we're checking, uh, we started the head and face and make sure that everything in their teeth looks good. We're checking their mucous membrane color. Um, and then we're looking at their eyes, their ears to make sure that everything checks out there. They've got good vision. They can see down the trail well. Um, there's not anything affecting their ears or frostbite that might be in there. And then as we move back uh, from the head, we're looking at their chest and body to make sure that they're a good body weight. Uh, we listen to their heart and lungs to make sure that everything sounds good they'll often be in such good shape that we'll actually, you know, pass many with flying colors. Um, what we're also looking for is on physical exam, we're, going, we're running down their feet, making sure that each of their feet um, don't have any splits, cracks, or any injuries to their feet. Um, we also feel each muscle individually on our physical exam to make sure that they have good muscle tone, that they're ready to run a thousand miles. Poised as we are on the cusp of the race start, it's worth pausing a moment to examine the central question underlying the whole enterprise. Why would anyone want to run a thousand miles with their dogs through a daunting landscape in what is inarguably the cruelest month in the North? It's a question we've been asked countless times, and to be honest, the answer that we give tends to vary every single time. I suspect the answer for this field of mushers, too, is as widely variegated as the topography along the trail. I'm not sure that it will be any help or provide any insight into the motivations of these 15 mushers, but I'll offer up my thoughts in the event that they might resonate. 
The easy version of the answer, before unpacking all of its nuances, is that there is some magnetic draw to the unthinkable challenge that this race proposes. It requires that you step outside of time, husband yourself to antiquity, fare forward against the better claims of reason and logic, take great pains to care consistently and well for other living creatures, and experience a solitude made absolute by the scope and scale of its backdrop. John Ashbery wrote that all time reduces to no special time, which applies here in the sense that on the trail, as the days tack on to one another, that semblance of loose organization that provides the architecture of our everyday thins and fades until there is only the sunrise, the sunset, the swirl of stars, the dragon's breath of the aurora, or the snow in all of its iterations, beneficent or otherwise. And always the shush of the runners, always the breath of the dogs, the quiet of the camps but for the small crackle of the cooker, or the song in your head while the dogs curl up to sleep. On the trail, it doesn't matter if it's two in the morning or two in the afternoon. What matters is how the dogs are looking, how you're moving together through it all. There's a lure in that liquefaction of time. There's an undeniable pull in merging with that timeless landscape. Why? Uh, we're gonna take a little break and then uh, head over Rosebud and head to 101. It's not a bad climb at all, and then it's just downhill all the way into central for the most part. So, yeah, this next leg, um, barring any overflow, shouldn't be too bad. Reaching the top of Eagle Summit. Coming from mile 101, so definitely easier. Good dogs!
I went through Central. It was pretty slow going. It's kind of midday, real sloggy. Um, then I stopped past Medicine Lake, camped for five hours. Uh, then they picked up for the last run, and it was Birch Creek, you know, long, long just yeah. endless. Yeah. We're not even 200 miles into this thing, so we're moving steady. I'm happy with the dogs, and we're just gonna keep moving down the trail. last 20 miles are pretty slow, slow going, but up before that it was great. Yeah, it was kind of blowing in a little bit and it was just softer. I think they did put the trail in a little later than in the previous section. So. Uh, I think some of the biggest worries or fears that we have out there is, is being able to take care of our dogs. We always want our dogs to be healthy and happy and when you start having maybe an issue here or there, that can become a big problem if you don't deal with it. And so I think that's probably the biggest thing is right off the bat, you just want to take care of your dogs. And then maybe the overflow or the big mountains or the steep hills, but in, in the end, you know, it's, it goes right back to the dogs. And I think for me, my biggest concern is making sure I take 100% care of the dogs throughout the entire race. down in the dumps or high on the mountain, depending on how much leak you got. Well, we just left Trickle Checkpoint. Still have 14 dogs in the team. They're looking really good. We just left the circle in fourth place. Just, I don't know, half hour behind Alan, about an hour behind Brent. Moving on to Slavis. It's going to be a beautiful day out here on the Yukon River. And we're finally getting away from the hubbub and the, the big checkpoints and the road system. So this is about to get fun. Good jobs. Just left Trout Creek a little bit ago. Head to Eagle on the Yukon River. It's kind of uh, been a super snowy, blowy Slowy kind of day, drifting in the trails, kind of slow going, a slow run over from Slavens. Took a little, little bit longer than expected, but then we had a good rest. Trout Creek, beautiful evening coming on, the moon's getting big, the river's beautiful, dogs are moving good. 
Eagle's kind of unique because we're off the road system here and in the winter time, well I should say we're off the road system in the winter time, no roads are open here. So everything has to be flown in if it doesn't come in with dog team or snow machines over the trails. It's, uh, at this point we're 160 road miles from paved road. Probably burned a little more energy than those guys did back there, but it's blowing in pretty quickly too. So. And that was the whole way through, or just the later? Uh, certain sections, but pretty much the whole way. You come around to bend in the river, and it's really wind blowing, and breaking trail through that for, you know, a mile or two, and then wind blowing, and so it, it really fluctuated, and and, and uh, was a variety of conditions. It was uh, rather windy and punchy, uh, so it's you know slow a slow trail, but maybe a bit faster. I'm eager to get over American Summit, just since the trail conditions sound challenging, so I will be a little bit more relaxed when I'm on the other side. Um, but yeah, just going into Canada, It'd be pretty fun. Come down American Summit, on the back side, and down towards 40 Mile. It's been kind of a wild ride, but the sun and the rise is happening, and it's a beautiful day. And I have to stop and enjoy the scenery before we continue on our wild ride. <laughs> Got 13 dogs, just left Eagle a couple hours ago, and headed to Dawson. Paige is excited. The dogs. Set up camp so they have a third every team has a 36 hour layover uh, where the mushers can come in and this is the only time the handler which is me uh, can care for the dogs the rest of the race it's the musher they do all the um, massaging feeding uh, bootying all of that for the rest of the race but this 36 hours uh, they get a break bring their dogs in and I take over so this uh, tarp here that Derek is setting up we're gonna fill that up with straw. The dogs are gonna come in, we're gonna bed them down, cover them with blankets, uh, feed them, massage them, and let them rest for 36 hours. We'll all be getting up every every handful of hours or so and walking them around and feeding them. And then this uh, Arctic oven here is where I sleep, so I'm gonna stay here with them the whole time where the musher goes and sleeps in a hotel room or wherever they want, so. <laughs> So Dawson is roughly the halfway point in the race and all of the dogs, all the dog teams have a mandatory 36 hour layover here. Uh, so once they get here, they're not allowed to leave for 36 hours. So during that time, every dog gets a complete physical exam, just like if you were to take your, your dog to a vet clinic um, in town. So we look at their eyes, ears, nose, throat, we assess their cardiovascular function, their respiratory function, their hydration. We put all their limbs through a range of motion. We look at their feet and we just make sure that they're doing okay, that they're fit to continue the race. We try to do those mandatories pretty much right when they get here. And then if we do find some issues, they have 36 hours to kind of work on that. We have vets, we're sitting in the vet shack right now. So we'll have vets in the vet shack uh, 24 hours a day um, from the time the first musher gets here until the last musher leaves. So they can stop in any time. They can ask us to look at dogs. They can ask us for help. We receive drop dogs from the remote checkpoints here too. Um, so we'll have some of them showing up tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we basically are set up here for as long as there's dogs in Dawson. It's always fun to be back in Dawson. And, uh, it's fun to be here first. But yeah, it's good. Dogs, dogs did really well. Been, uh, the trail has been 
a quest trail, you know, lots of breaking trail, lots of blowing in trail, and um, the dogs have done a really good job. I'm super proud of them. Um, there's definitely some challenging conditions in certain places, and they just put their head down and got the job done. You know, it's always different. Every race is different, every stage is different, different groups of dogs. Yeah, you never really compare. It took a little longer than I remembered. I was getting a little annoyed at the end there because it seemed like it was taking forever, but we made it. The dogs are happy. I'm there right now, but we're just halfway, so we'll see. Welcome to Dawson. Thank you. Just uh, make sure these guys get lots of food and um, lots of sleep, and uh, yeah, just take it run by run. See what the conditions are like. Quest is mostly a challenge. Every year is different, different terrain, different snow conditions, different, you know, every year is different, so it, it creates different challenges every year. You know, last year we had it in the dark. It was nicer in the daylight. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'd run it in the dark, I could run it in the daylight. Beautiful. But no, it's easy. Fun, fun climb. So there's 500 miles left and yeah, I mean, I'm starting to think about Michelle and Cody and Alan and, and what their strategies are going to be down the trail. Um, but in the end, I know what I need to run for my dogs. And um, so I'm going to continue to do that. And then, you know, when we get to like, you know, Pelly, the race for me really begins in Pelly. I got to set myself up to be able to race in Pelly. So you're kind of racing, but it's mainly a setup more than anything to get to that point where then maybe you have to change your schedule if you want to win or want to place well i may have to drop an hour or add an hour rest whatever it may be um, to keep myself where i want to be as far as the competition but if i start thinking about that right now and say oh i better cut this hour now because you know i want to be ahead of her right now or ahead of him right now that can cause you problems Take one step forward, seems like I fall two steps back. Every time I get my wheels moving, feels like they're coming off the tracks. There are times where I'd be dying if I said I did it all right. No regrets, never say die. Gonna give it all in this fight. We just left our uh, camp in the Black Hills, head towards Scroggy.
Well, we started out on this run today up to the Chain of Lakes. It was a nice solid trail. And looking forward to a good run, but then a blizzard came in. The dogs are working their bums off, but they're doing great. Nico is trail breaking extraordinaire. And she's teaching Aggie trades tricks of the trade. From marker to marker. And they're all working real hard at five and a half miles an hour. Got a long night ahead of us. Good dogs! Good job, you guys! Yeah, it slowed us down a lot. I mean, it was like, you had to just sort of shut your mental... <laughs> shut off the fact that you were all of a sudden going two miles an hour slower or whatever we were and, and just focus on moving forward and ticking and ski pulling and trying to be as positive as you can to the dogs and they just trucked right along. They did an excellent job. You have to be on it the whole way um, because any, you know, she's right there. And all I'm thinking about is the run tonight. The whole time going any cushion I can have for the run tonight, it's gonna to make that hundred mile run tonight in ten inches of snow, I guess. beautiful night. This is the last night on the Quest Trail, hopefully. <laughs> We're about 90 miles from Whitehorse and the dogs are moving along. Okay pace. Snow is like sandpaper. It's keeping us really slow. We're only going six miles an hour. It's take us a while to get there at this pace, but we'll stop, do a little camp, freshen up, start out again. Hopefully beat Alan there. Good dogs! Let's go to Whitehorse! Let's give Brent a nice Whitehorse welcome. So I've run 13 Yukon Quests and I broke trail in this quest 10 times more than any of the other races put together. So um, yeah, it was a it was a challenge. Um, it wasn't a lot of storms, but there's a lot of wind on the Yukon and there was hardly any trail. So I mean, not due to the trail breakers, they all did an amazing job, but you can't stop the wind from blowing it in. So. Um, but it was great. It was a quest trail and we had a really good time and, and uh, the, the dogs really proved they, they got what it takes.
was a lot of snow. Um, it was really slow, so I stopped for a while, took a break, but the dogs had a nap. That was nice. Yeah, but yeah, it was a long run. Oh, there were so many adventures. Um, just so many. It was an adventure from start to finish. I'm very proud of my team. Um, they were a beautiful group of dogs. We went through some really tough situations. They gelled as a group. They listened. They're just wonderful, wonderful dogs to work with and a great team. Welcome to White Horse, Cody. <laughs> The goal was not to try to win, the goal was to do the best we could do with our dogs so that they finish happy and strong. Mother Nature always wants you to just show that she's boss, right at the end of a race especially. Uh, and this is no different for sure. Yeah, I've always ski pole. I figured, you know, I'm not the small, uh, smallest person out there so I need something to make up a little bit of difference. Welcome to White Horse! Uh, this race was pretty much all about wind, snow and trail breaking. <laughs> um, I don't think there's an easy direction. <laughs> I think it just depends on the conditions. Mostly I just enjoy the lifestyle and having the dogs and um, all the places you can go with them. So, uh, so yeah, definitely mushing for forever. Ten dogs. Oh, their tails are wagging. They look pretty happy. Yeah. Welcome to Whitehorse, Nora. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a lot of snow. It felt like all of it was on the trail. But yeah, they did good. Dogs did very good. I'm really really impressed with how how happy they've been. I mean, I don't know if I am on plan D or E now because it's been so slow, but it's been going well. And I'm also really happy that both the other rookies are still on the trail and kicking it. And I'm excited for both of them to come in. Yeah, I think I learned mostly like from the dogs. They keep me, they keep me very happy. Even if you have like a down, you just look at one of the dogs and see how happy they are. And I think, uh, I think those are the ones who learn me, learn me most on the trail. I really liked the Black Hills actually because I had like moonlight. It was gorgeous going over there, and the trails were fairly good when I was there. And the dogs were pretty fresh out of Dawson, so I had a really nice run. And yeah, I also had a cool run out of McCabe. I had with a wolf in front of the team for a while, which was really cool. Um, they, they've been super happy the, the whole race. They, you know, they, they really have. Um, maybe, you know, maybe there's some times where, you know, they're not always, you know, not always looking like this. But it's been, it's been very rare. Uh, and they keep, you know, they keep me happy. And they keep, believe it or not, and they keep me um, motivated as well. They really are a pleasure to to be on the trail with. They're such, they're such. Uh, they love running so much. Um, yeah, it's just been a real pleasure to be out there with them. Olivia Webster.
know, I guess I've just always been a grandpa's girl and he's my best friend, so I just kind of wanted to be like him and so I'm doing it, so I did it. What does it mean to you to be able to cross this finish line and show him that you can do it? It's, best, it's one of the best days of my life. <laughs>